I really, really, really <laughs> like to announce to you that this uh, best talk will be presented by Pim, Sake, and Nicolette. And I really, really want you to give them a big hand for all the things they did for the batch talk. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. So, after three years, I can finally talk about this batch. <laughs> so, first, a challenge from Sebastius. The, from the last edition, the Batchelot team was going to be very busy with the MCH batch, um, so they weren't going to do the next Hacker Hotel batch. And they were asking for a volunteer. Well, I can do that. I volunteered at uh, the dinner, and um, thankfully, uh, Renze said, well, we have a fallback uh, in place um, if it... Uh, something goes wrong, so that gave me a bit of rest, like, okay, this is going to be fine. Um, and then we had a discussion uh, about the batch at uh, breakfast, um, where we got some requirements. Um, we couldn't use any of the chips that would, were planned from the MCH batch. They wanted to get sponsorship, and we want, didn't want to cross uh, each other uh, trying to ask the same company for the same chips. Um, we had to send you around the hotel, uh, because, well, um, you had to see the Angry Nerd Studio, for example, that was a bit hidden. Um, it had to add a game or two. Um, a lesson from the last batch was, well, it would be very useful if you could just connect USB to it instead of having to use some kind of converter. And also very important, it had to be cheap. <laughs> because, um, well, Dimitri has to pay for it somehow. <laughs> we'll get to that at the end. <coughs> so, the implementation. Like Dimitri said in the opening talk, um, I had my first prototype after two weeks. Um, it featured uh, a SAMD11 uh, microcontroller, which is a very tiny uh, ARM microcontroller with integrated USB. We had an EEPROM on there to store some state bits, uh, Flash to store a lot of things uh, in there uh, that we could use for games, a uh, shift register to add more LEDs, because LEDs are important, and for communication between some kind of beacons uh, or between batch to batch, I had planned to do that optically um, with an LED and a uh, photodiode. So, of course, it doesn't go right the first time. Um, so I made an, uh, a second prototype. Um, I had to fix some issues with pinouts. I put the wrong... Uh, thing of the flash chip to the wrong pin of the microcontroller. Um, and uh, we were experimenting with trying to program it in Rust. But there were also some things happening. So, on the 27th of the February, it was announced, well, we have the first uh, case of corona in the Netherlands. And in March, more and more measures were, were taken. And there were the first doubts, well, could this event actually go on? Um, it did give me a lot of time to do projects, because I had to stay at home. Um, so, um, I experimented with uh, running a microcontroller uh, on a coin shell. That kind of worked, but the battery drained uh, in like half a day. And um, if you don't, haven't noticed this weekend, uh, half a day is not long enough. <coughs> um, but still, things weren't going that well in the world. So, on September 23rd, um, 6.30 p.m., a tweet, where, with great sadness, it was announced that um, Hacker Hotel was cancelled. Then, well, around July 2001, 
are you still interested in doing this badge? From the last time, we I figured out, well, I can't really do that with a two-man team. Um, so I asked for some help. Um, I asked Tom to help out with um, getting the thing actually manufactured. Uh, Nicolette um, for helping out uh, with the artwork. And Sake um, for helping out um, with the puzzles. There was only one small issue. A chip shortage. <laughs> I couldn't get uh, the main chip I wanted to use. Um, and all the other things that needed to go on there were also um, getting more expensive. So we had to go looking for a new microcontroller. Um, we uh, had two basic choices. We could either go for the RP2040, which was a very brand new chip from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, but it had some weird availability issues and it was, well, new, so you had to figure out uh, some stuff. Um, we could also use the ESP32, which is a known chip, um, but isn't that energy efficient? Again, we would like to have it run on a small battery, and um, with this chip you have the same problem that you won't make the end of the weekend. It was also a bit close to, the, uh, infra to how the MCH batch worked, but we could get 500 of them. So I first focused on um, seeing if I could build something with that RP2040. Um, I made some boards, some small de a main dev board and some small other boards just to try out um, how this thing uh, could work. Uh, it also added a shift register again. I tried out running it on battery again, seeing if I could uh, turn on, turn it on, and also have it turn off automatically using the chip. Um, and it was also the first instance that I could collaborate with Nicolette. Um, I did cause some issues. Um, the shift register wasn't correct, uh, attached correctly, so I could only get seven bits in there instead of eight, um, which meant that if we would have done that, we had less uh, place to put codes that we put out throughout the hotel. Um, so that uh, had to be fixed. And with the buttons, I was also connecting uh, power directly to outputs that could be ground, so you would create some short. That was also not good. So we fixed those things. Um, but first, getting the RP2040. So they were, uh, these chips were introduced first as a dev board from Raspberry Pi themselves, um, that you could get for well, like three months. Then you could order individual chips, um, and then you uh, could get reels of them. But um, the li delivery time of that would be somewhere in November, December, which is too late for this batch. Um, so I sent an email to Raspberry Pi and uh, explained what we wanted to do, and they said, wow, that's a cool project. Here you have a reel of 500 for free. Thank you. <laughs> so they sent that out, and uh, that was the first component that was in China at the 6th of October. But I still had to design a batch. Um, so I made a first prototype that included all of the components uh, that were on there. Um, it was very close to what you have on your neck right now. Um, the only thing uh, was that the battery circuit, again, didn't work. You're sensing a theme here. Um, <laughs> instead of half a day, now it went from like one half day, which meant that at Saturday your battery would die. Uh, still not good. So I made a new version, simplified the battery circuit greatly, um, 
And that was this bad, uh, version. Time was starting to run out because we had to push everything to production. Um, but then I got some messages like, maybe you should put some more work into it. We don't like what uh, you're doing. Um, so um, we never produced this. Like I pressed order and then I pressed cancel because we had to do some rework on the design. And to explain a bit more like what kind of all kinds of things uh, we were doing with the design, I would like to invite Nicolette on stage. <laughs> Working with me on a badge is not just slapping a uh, raster image on it and just hope KiCad will actually make it work. It's a whole bunch of conceptualization and getting to know the team if it's a new team, as this was my first time with, uh, collaborating with Pimos, so I had to understand um, how we could uh, work together. So this was, so my apologies, so this was kind of a warm-up project. Um, he asked me to produce some very simple artwork for the, the, the badge when it was still in three modular stages. And then we started to understand that we can work very well together. Um, so how did we end up from cute cats with visual hearts uh, in gravestones and such? Um, so... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So we were, of course, this had a, a group where we just discussed all kinds of the ideas, and um, it was still a kind of squarish design. Um, and then you came up with the idea that it kind of looks like a gravestone. Yes, so we defined a form factor, it should be a square, uh, and we wanted to bring another adventure, just as with the uh, Hacker Hotel 2020 badge, it was an Egyptian theme. We were wondering if we should do another culture or we should come up with some other fantasy element and then we wanted to do something creepy, basically. So we went into this direction. <laughs> uh, I also happened to visit uh, Delft at that time, so I could take some photos of the uh, tombstones in the floor, which gave, gave me a lot of inspiration also. Um, and then we started to brainstorm further that we actually want to do a badge, which is also a retro computer merged together with something that is ancient. Um, and, you know, computers have wizards. So it's a computer wizard. It's a Merlin. It helps you. It could also not help you. And then our concept of uh, split personality, artificial intelligence was born. Then came the first sketches. We already had the square, but we have started to see things where they don't belong, such as sigils in biscuits. Um, that was a, a meme that I posted to the guys to the chat, but that was very relevant to how we have been feeling at the time already. Um, so this is what we call Nicolette's Playground. It's an empty badge which you give to me and you say, go wild on it. And I saw cracks in it, and I thought, OK, I think I have an idea. This is the first sketch. Uh, as you see, the text was placeholders. I had an idea of what should go where. I had no idea exactly what should it be. But it started to take shape, and um, I love to produce uh, badges which are outside the box. Uh, that means that you have to do interactive things with it, so it's not just software-based, but you might have to interact with your fellow uh, hackers, or you have to pay attention to the corners. You might see a picture frame with something that's related to the badge. You might have to modify the badge yourself, but these might be spoilers, so I'm not going too much into details with that. This was about the last sketch, but it's really the final artwork. Um, so the left side is for us to, to see that this is all we have, and the right side is what you have on your neck. 
with the puzzles missing on it, because that's up to you to find them. Then we step on the problem that we still didn't decide the color. It's a stone tablet. It's a gravestone. It's a sacred tablet. It could be black, could be green, because perhaps it's very old, it's oxidized, or it's full of algae or moss. Uh, or it could be lapis lazuli, as you can produce a blue PCB with gold and a white silk screen. So, so we just went with that. And the first prototypes came in. Uh, our idea with producing <coughs> cracks using the FR4, well, FR4 is the base layer of the PCB, so we, just, we could just play with that, that we could use that as the cracks to add an extra dimension to it. And uh, as Tom very honestly questioned, what magic fuckery is going on here? Why do you have an extra color of green where the traditional PCB doesn't have that? So if you look on your badge, you can see that really it has... It is basically like we took a knife and we just crashed it, but really it is manufactured like that. I love to... I love to work on badges because we can always make it extra. It, it doesn't just stop at being a boring sheet of FR4. It can be so much more. And whoever will be in the next batch team I will work with, I'm looking forward to, <coughs> looking forward to working with you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, and then you get a whole bunch of files from Nicolette and um, <laughs> you have to incorporate that into your design. Um, <coughs> of course, th she did. All, uh, she did a great job of delivering those files. Um, but I ha had a problem with the copper layer that I would really like to check if the uh, continuity uh, through it was correct. So then, in KiCad, I had to trace all of the cracks and make sure that it passed the design rule check. Because then you know for sure that the batch will work if you send it out. And not well. Um, so, batches were ready for production. Um, the communication with Allnet, our producers, started like, how much is it going to cost? And what kind of deadlines do we have? And the final deadline was the 18th of December. Um, I sent an email to Dimitri with. Hi, Dimitri. We're about to spend a lot of money. Do you still want to continue? And then I got an email back with, I have some doubts. What do you think? Uh, then I sent an email back with, I'm not seeing it as well. And then um, we decided we put it on hold and we'll decide ra around the 18th of December. He first needed to talk to some other people and uh, what he thought about it. And then, on the 17th of December, 5 p.m., another tweet. Another edition of Hacker Tell sadly cancelled. Um, so, we still did a bit of work. Um, we just send out the files that we had ready for production um, again out for prototyping and we made a black version of uh, the batch. This was intended to be used for software development um, in the upcoming year and also a bit as a thank you for people that worked really hard uh, on aspects uh, of the batch to give them something special that not a lot of people had. Um, but yeah, then it, the project kind of stopped. So, the next attempt. We shelved the project until MCH, um, but there were some, still some things that uh, were happening with the things we did. Um, the RP2040 um, looked very interesting, and some people, Renze, um, was actually very interested in how did we get the chips and could we use that for our beds because they had an SCM32 on there which was also not available. 
So we brought them into contact and then uh, Renze took it further and made sure that you had also had an RP2040 on your MCH batch. Um, <coughs> I also got a request from Tom because he already knew that I knew something about RP2040s um, to use it in another batch. Um, so I had some spare time and I thought, well, that would be nice. So I made a dev board on the left um, and uh, Nicolette and Tom turned it into the batch in the middle. So all the effort we did in uh, 2021 wasn't actually for nothing. Um, there were still some design elements that could be used for other batches. Um, but then uh, we got the, another email from Dimi, of course, that um, we're going to really have this event. Um, so we made the last prototype, sent it out with uh, the exact specifications as we wanted to build, because in the previous prototypes, um, I added a bit larger chips and stuff, um, just to make sure that we could develop something. But this is really the one that we intended to produce. Um, we sent, again, production files and the bill of materials to all net. Um, and we had to do that early because Chinese New Year was early. Like in 2021, it was nicely planned around Hacker Hotel. So you had a lot of time. And this time it was the 22nd of January. So we had to rush. Of course, we had all the design files ready from the previous year. so. That was manageable. Um, so production was running smoothly. Um, we started the 7th of December. I made some test procedures to, to make sure that once the, uh, the batches were made, that they could test them in China, see if they worked. There was a small issue with a diode footprint. I put the wrong one component on there. So um, I got an email like, well, um, they can hand solder it on there. Okay, that's a bit of a bummer, but fine. And then on the 28th of December, 9.47 a.m., I got an email. The batches are done. They don't work. <laughs> um, that was a no shit moment. Um, we did some. We tried to do some remote debugging. Have you tried this? Have you pressed these buttons? Uh, what could be happening? We got pictures back. Mm, they looked fine. Like they look exactly the same as your badge. Um, we had some context clues that things were kind of working, like the bootloader booted. So that was a good sign. Um, but we couldn't figure it out. So we had ten samples shipped to my house. Like, we can figure this out. You go look at it. Um, that was a very long week because shipping things over New Year's takes longer. Um, but yeah, once I got them, it was plugging it in. Yes, it's broken. Um, and then the debugging started. The crystal was fine. Um, I could run a program that I loaded into RAM, so the whole circuit wa was working. But for some reason, you couldn't get anything into Flash. I tried swapping out the Flash chip, and then the batch started up and worked as intended. That was weird. Um, I dumped the Flash, and then I found strings in the Flash. That shouldn't happen, because when you get new flash chips, they should be empty. Um, we tried looking into resetting the status bits, um, diving deep into how to communicate to the flash chip that sold it on the board using the RP2040. Um, and we found out, yeah, th there were some non-volatile bits uh, in there that were set. So you, it was read only. And then we looked at one important bit for locking the status registers, and that was set. That meant that these chips would never be able to receive from where. Uh, that was a really big problem. Um, so 
we were assuming that we had to do a swatch job in the Netherlands. Like, get the badges over here, get 500 flash chips, and then at Bitlayer, uh, get them off, put the new one on. Um, but thankfully, Norbert and Allnet came up with a plan. They would uh, order chips, samples, see if they worked, and then um, at lightning speed, re uh, replace all the flash chips. Then suddenly on Monday, I got text from FedEx. There is a package underway. Um, they were very quick, um, and all of the badges were reworked in China. Um, we received them, and then I spent the day at, in, in the afternoon at Bitlar just trying out badges to see if everything went fine. Um, that was the case. Um, so we could uh, relax a bit and start with figuring out the other bits. Uh, why is there no... Oh, no. The demo factor is there, but it's very small. No, we kind of need that. Yes. Uh, God. <laughs> How are we going to fix this? Can I just show this another way? Something has to go wrong in this project. Uh, no. And now you're seeing nothing, that's good. <laughs> we didn't have to bodge the badge, so now we have to bodge the presentation, so. <laughs> live on stage. Here we go, that's the one you wanted. <laughs> we'll do it like this for now, and then we'll fix it. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. Oh God! Yes, this. Is I'm glad this is the m the biggest thing that's going <coughs> wrong right now. Really. <laughs> uh, how does this work? Start from current. Uh, I'm sorry. No, you will, you will have to tell it. I'm sorry. OK, but you could get a glimpse of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, while Pim was desperately trying to make everything to work, uh, we agreed to also sp uh, continue splitting the tasks. And uh, Sakai will talk about his part of, of the puzzles and how he was implementing it. Um, in the meantime, I was setting up the story concept and writing as much details as I could think of that uh, I will give to Saka later on so he could um, make something amazing out of it. The evil game that you're trying to solve is, is his work. It's <coughs> but it was teamwork, so you can also blame me if you find it too hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I was filling out this document, I put uh, or uh, the, the main character, the spirit, which you can see on your badge uh, right here. Underneath, I put the company logo. And underneath, I put the, the text, which you can also see on the badge. And it started to become really clear that, OK, this is a real flashy concept. This is going to be amazing. But we need a few more bits, such as the lanyard. We need uh, some packaging. We need some stickers for it. And we need to complete the badge, because it's still missing uh, like half of it. <laughs> Uh, the sticker that we used to seal the bags was inspired from uh, atomic bomb uh, restricted data stamps, rewritten to our own concept. And the lanyard was inspired from punch strips, which is what, was, what were used for these retro computers that we also tried to uh, put into the badge that you have. Trying to nail the colors on the screen that possibly might have been close to these punch strips was um, it was research, but not a type of research I'm used to, because I had to look at not uh, ancient cultures, but instead retro computers from the past century. That was exciting for me, <laughs> something new. And as I said, the half of the badge was still missing, so uh, we, I have to produce that so you can actually finish the game. I took an SVG and extruded it in a 3D modeling software, 
printed it. And after verifying that it all fit together perfectly, smoothly, then I went on to colorize it, uh, make it as close to this um, imitated lapis lazuli as we got on the PCB as, as I could. And uh, the result is, is it was quite convincing, so we decided to put it up. And you can find this still in the corridors if you still haven't looked at it. It's close to the reception. Be sure to check it out. Now, the game doesn't actually end at the end, <laughs> because um, there are two endings, depending on how you solve it. One of the endings will make you come to find a priestess with a lapis lazuli necklace, and you would be given uh, a stone manifestation of yourself as a token of a, a memento that you attended this event, and you actually finished the badge while you were here. Um, yeah, we, our first finishers were quite uns unsurprisingly from the original batch team. <laughs> <laughs> it was so satisfying to see. We, so we were sitting next to each other with Sake, watching these three guys be so busy. We knew exactly where they were in, in the story, busy, being focused. And we were like, what is taking them so long? They, they were supposed to already f solve it. And then, then they were looking at me. They looked back. They looked at me. <laughs> and we knew they solved it, and the right way. <laughs> As a special thank you, I would like to mention that without my plants and animals, freelancing at home is, uh, would not be as smooth as it is. So, thank you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then, sack it. <laughs> yeah. Number two, okay. Um, yeah, I did the, the, the badge together with Nicolette and the other team members of the badge team uh, in 2020, and it was a really stressful period in getting everything done. So uh, when the, we had a talk about, okay, maybe we can do an MCH badge, I was like, oh no, not again. And then, of course, again. <laughs> so uh, I talked to Dimitri, and uh, he sent me a message like, hey, can you, can you help out? And okay, well, of course I can. Um, so we started having ideas about, so we're going, we're backtracking a little bit, like this is again uh, in 2021, when I was started to get involved, like we were uh, investigating ideas on, on retro computing because yeah, we already had the idea and we want, really wanted to have like a retro computer, like an Altair or something like that, uh, similar to that on the, on the batch. Um, Pim already had some shift reg register thingies built, so and I wanted to have uh, the Altair thing, and in the end, you see <laughs> that it's actually combined on the batch, so we couldn't make a decision. We just used both. Um, as Pim said before, there's a uh, uh, the develop development board, so the, the the group started and we started discussing things. And of course, I needed something to build a game with, and a game without a state is nothing. And the RP twenty four doesn't have any EEPROM, so. Uh, I said, well, do we have money for EEPROMs? Okay, EEPROMs were added so I could um, maintain game state and I could really build a game. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so we started, basically we started out, okay, let's let's make uh, a retro computer with instructions or really make it work and then have uh, some AI that, that you talk to on the badge with it with that code and have have to find other people to, to combine modules or stuff like that, really into the retro computing thing. But that's just a whole bunch of work and, and probably not going to happen. So um, we parked it for a minute, especially also because COVID happened, of course. Um, so one of the, the, the requirements from Dimi was to have people walk around the hotel and see where all the others were. So that was put in the uh, game ideas. We, have, we, of course, needed to do something with the lanyard again. Uh, the puzzle, uh, I wanted to have a puzzle on the game, or sorry, on the batch that people could use in their spare time, work on the batch itself to, to do puzzles. And of course, we needed an adventure, at least that's what I thought. Um, and for me, a batch is also about communication, about meeting people, about working together. So there needed to be something that you needed to do together again on this batch. A couple of the ideas that resemble what we did uh, three years earlier, but still, I think those are important elements. Um, 
So the old computer was there. Uh, we had some spirit thingies, like, okay, what it happens if we just make it that the good spirit or the AI turns bad and turns onto you? And uh, yeah, that got us started into the whole uh, idea of the game. Um, and of course, we wanted to do something nice with web USB, maybe something graphical, but yeah, then we knew it needed to have more people working on it. And that's a lot of coding. So I built this game engine in, in 2020 that, that if you were there, I presented about that uh, earlier as well. Um, so we decided why not use that and just create the content and not spend time on the programming. Of course, being me, everything goes on at the right, uh, right time, which is in my world is just in time. Um, so the, I did. I, I created the, um, the button challenge, just the challenge response once earlier. So that was already. Uh, I had a prototype, and actually, it was kind of the final version straight away. So that went in. Um, but now for an adventure, like we have been brainstorming, we have been, we, we set up a document with all kinds of details of what we want to incorporate, and then how do you make a storyline that's consistent? That's yeah. So that's really what took time to work on and. Um, and since we had some elements that were uh, real life elements, I, th I thought, okay, let's just focus on everything that's on the badge and see where it comes from, like where does Lapas Lazuli come from? What was uh, John D actually in his life? How can we incorporate it in the story? And in the end, that's where the, where the whole adventure game came from. So it's mixed, mixed uh, reality events with uh, a bit of fantasy because time travel is still not possible, at least as I know, but that's in the batch somehow. Um, so that's basically uh, how I ended up filling again a JSON file because the whole game is a JSON file being compiled into something that can be used. Um, a little bit about the JSON because how, how can you make something work like this in a JSON file? Uh, we have a lot of status bits in the EEPROM that, that tell you if you picked up an object, if, it's, uh, uh, if you use an object, if you, well, and, uh, what kind of object can you use on what other kind of objects, all been defined in these, um, in these settings. And if you look at the facial ACL, it's an access control list if an object is visible, um, we, uh, we have 128 status bits, and if you enable the high-end bits, it's not shown. So you can remove things from the GUI or from the from the text center, and, and any status that's below 128 is you need to have a certain bit set be, before the object is really there. Sometimes you have an object with the same name with the two status codes, so it changes when you do something. It, the object changes, and yeah, with these elements and uh, with uh, an ACL, what you can do with an object if you can read it, if you can uh, look at it, if you can use it. You can build a game just by using a, a JSON file. That's already been open sourced in in uh, three years ago. We will publish our code. We'll, you'll talk about that later. So that's basically what uh, what I did, and it was finished uh, quite just we'll in time. Yes, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> so. Um, we were done two hours before I drove off to uh, Amersfoort for this red shop. <laughs> <laughs> like we were still making changes uh, and compiling and stuff and testing. Um, so I had my mind still on firmware and not on packaging things. Um, but all the stuff was there. So uh, with the people that were present uh, over there, um, we uh, managed to set up a nice uh, assembly line and uh, had everything packaged in about two, two and a half hours. <laughs> like Dimi uh, said in his opening talk, he was surprised how well the, that went. Um, of course, what he didn't tell was, okay, the lanyards were uh, like a day late. They arrived on Monday instead of Friday. Um, so we had to do a second stretch up in the bar here. <laughs> that took another two hours. <laughs> so in total, we were busy like four hours uh, filling up the bags and uh, um, shooting everything. Um, I would like to thank everybody that helped. I see Noor and Richard uh, over there. Um, Dan, uh, Chantal, Rob. Um, I'm forgetting a lot of people, I'm sorry. 
Um, but uh, your help was greatly appreciated. <laughs> and then we're done. There were no major issues, at least we didn't break rule number zero, we didn't set anybody on fire. <laughs> um, <laughs> We only have uh, about four hours. I guess we'll be fine. Like a mini. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. We did need a firmware up uh, upgrade, um, so. Um, Saka forgot some things, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because there were some interaction things that interacted, of course, with the objects. I forgot to put an ACL, uh, uh, vis um, uh, an ACL, on what you can do with an object. So the hints that were appearing because of the best to best communication, you couldn't read them. You could see them, but you couldn't read them. And if you couldn't read them, you can't solve the challenge. So we did have to, like, first we had some optimizations for the batch in the firmware. So it was ni uh, nice to have to have another firmware. But now it was needed, and we discovered that on Friday, the third evening, actually, I think. So we had a little uh, yeah, coding exercise on, uh, on Friday <laughs> and <laughs> created yes. a new firmware. <laughs> um, we also discovered another thing, that uh, if we tried to give you one of the hints, the UTF-8 wasn't displayed correctly yep. on web USB. Yep. So we also had to fix that uh, at the last minute. Um, and a bit of a, um, a hardware bug was that um, some people um, didn't uh, put in the battery correctly. It had a bit of a trick where you had to push the battery in the bottom and then click it into place. And if you just pushed it in, you bent uh, those pins. Um, all of these things ended up uh, on the website that was displayed on the memo, anisidora.nl. Um, there were two paths to solve uh, this batch. There was the official path where you <laughs> figured out all the hints and uh, um, got through it that way. And there was also another way, um, just pulling apart the firmware and trying to figure it out. Of course, I have to mention Renze again. <laughs> 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 Um, because I, I think they took that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we decided, <laughs> we, because we knew already that some things wouldn't be very <coughs> closed off, so we decided, hey, it's Hacker Hotel. Let people play the game. If they want to hack the game, let's have some entry points that people can do that as well. So that's, yeah, I think that's fun. Yeah, you can play the game uh, as you want. It's a hacker event, yeah. so we kind of expect that people were doing those kinds of things. So, the theme. Um, I would like to thank Nicolette <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and Sake. Um, a great help w was Tom, yeah. that helped with production. Um, people that are sadly not here, but uh, did uh, some components of it were Joris, that uh, helped us with the web uh, USB. <laughs> and uh, Gai Laos, that did the design uh, with at the button side. And thank you, Pim. Pim, yeah. yay! This badge wouldn't have been possible without uh, sponsors. Um, we would uh, really like to thank Access42 for <laughs> sponsoring the badge, but also sponsoring the lanyard. Yay. <laughs> that uh, was a quite big bomb item, so I was very happy they, would, they sponsored us. Um, Stegen Electronics also sponsored us. <laughs> and again, Raspberry Pi gave us the RP2040s. We would also like to uh, uh, thank uh, Norbert um, at Allnet China uh, because 
without his help and uh, making sure that everything uh, got reworked, we wouldn't have a badge here on time. Yeah. Now, we have a vacancy. After three years of working on a badge, um, I would like to do some other projects. <laughs> um, so it's time for another team. Um, if you would like to do the next Hacker Hotel badge, um, you can talk to Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> at breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you don't really have to do it at breakfast tomorrow, <laughs> but um, we could give you some hints and tell you more about project management and that sort of stuff if you're interested. Um, why would you want to build a badge? Well, you have a great idea and want to give it to uh, 400 other people. Um, or you are great at project management or want to learn how to be good at project management. <laughs> um, and you want to collaborate with amazing people on something. Now, the event is done. Now what? I expect that uh, some people haven't unpacked their bag uh, with the badge um, or just didn't get uh, to all the hints and stuff. Um, we will publish them uh, on uh, our website so you can also play the game uh, at home. Um, we will release the source code and uh, the hardware um, also on that website after the event. Um, and we will also put on some instructions for how to reuse uh, your badge. Um, a hint, it's basically a Raspberry Pi Pico with some LEDs and buttons on there. And a P-Bot connector to interface with the rest yes. of the world. Yeah. Um, for now, um, if you want to contact us, please file an issue on uh, the GitHub repository that's linked. Um, we will also put on there a way to uh, contact us later. And we're also still here uh, today, so if you find out that your badge has an issue or something or still want to ask us questions, um, you can still that do that today. And talking about questions, does anybody have questions? Do you have a throw mic or anything? Can you give a little bit of a bigger hint where we find the missing part? The missing part of the of the badge. Yes. Next to the reception. Next to the reception. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. And and also in the slides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Any other questions? What was the barrier to the, 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 the level of uh, the contestants you looked for? Because <laughs> I find very, the first challenge is quite hard actually to, to continue. Are you talking about the uh, challenge, challenge response? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really hard to make uh, 15 because we, we had like four data bits, so that's 16 challenges. And if we start with one, then it's 15. And to create 15 unique challenges on a challenge response game, that's really hard. So and my, br my brain is kind of evil. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I started with, of course, like uh, yeah, repeats, inverse, and I won't go on the whole list. But yeah, so the easy ones that you can do visually. And then I thought, OK, let's do something where you need to calculate things. Because then you need to interpret the, 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 the binary code as a number. And then if you have two or three examples, you would probably see the pattern and you can do it. And then I did, OK, let's do something with some sets of information. So you need to interpret the data in another way. And probably yeah, people that do a little bit of hacking and stuff, they recognize characters probably. So I tried to build up on that. and. In the end, for the really hard-coded nerds, let's put in some really challenging challenges at the end. And yeah, so 
I got a complaint from Pim, like, these are too, too complicated. So I, I shifted them a little bit so that the, the, they were in a more logical order. I removed one that was, uh, but I agreed that it was too difficult, and uh, added another one, I think, that was a little more in the middle. And then, yeah, let's go with this. And uh, as there are two paths, basically the batch is two, uh, two challenges on the batch, like the, the location codes and the, the challenge response. If you finish either one of those, and one of those is really easy. Just copy the numbers from the uh, from the, the signs. That would get you into the bootloader mode from the lanyard, and then after that you could start the adventure. So you didn't need to finish the challenge responses. That those were there as a pastime thingy to do parallel to the adventure game. That was not clear from there. Yeah, that's we, we we could have put a little bit more documentation on. The, but I answered quite a few questions from people, and we were I think quite reachable. But so yeah. But yeah, it's always documentation is always like thingy. <laughs> but good point. Hints are not. Yeah. Here's a question over here. Uh, the backside of the tablets, it, it's really cool design, so it will go on my wall because my whole house is uh, blue and gold. It's perfect. <laughs> nice. uh, but the characters on it, uh, what is it aspired of exactly? Is it aesthetic of a? Uh, Aztec or? Well, we were we were discussing uh, ideas and and we came up with. Uh, Is this a spoiler or not? Mm, yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Good point. I could tell you all about it once you solved it, or you could come to me and I can tell you in person. But if I tell you even just two keywords of it, it you can so easily. Google it or uh, duck, duck go it or browse for it, that it will just be a spoiler so easily. So come find me nice. and I'll tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm? Okay. There is that too, but I didn't mm -hmm. specify what was it. Yeah. No. Yeah. If, even if it was, let's pretend it was not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I specifically look for like a scan of. Yeah. Handwritten text with no translation to yeah. it. Did I write anywhere where it was? We can look, but uh, let's anyway. pretend it's not there. <laughs> it's not there. Oh. It's not <laughs> there. <laughs> <Let's Okay. laughs> it's a Schrodinger remark. It's either there or not there, and we don't know. <laughs> it, it, if it's difficult, it may or may not be on the picture frame which you have to find first, yeah. which was already said where it is. So if you remember, you're golden. If not, good luck finding it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's another question over here. So it, yeah, it's been really fun to play with so far, so thank you. Um, we are kind of stuck with, like, we have to find others. But we don't know how to identify, like, badges that are different than ours or how to interact in any way. Do you have any good hint there? Uh, come see us. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> or if everybody else wants to know. Yeah, that, let's come see us, I think, basically. Yeah, but it's one of the things that we have to put something online. How to yeah, fix that. of course, because the best bits communication can only happen here, of course, more or less. So we need to put something online for doing that after the event. So we will. So yeah. OK, we have time for one more question. One final question. Yes. Uh, so this might be a stupid question because I didn't really get that far with the challenge yet. But on the back there's a, r a row of solder pads. Is that just for accessing the the unused data pins? Yeah, this is just for accessing the data pins uh, and um, possibly reusing the badge. All right. Uh, yeah, because I saw I saw a square wave, so I got excited. But <laughs> it uh, it is indeed a hint of what is on the pins. Yeah. Okay. I got it then. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of my request that I do not want to see. Letters which you can recognize on the this side yeah. for aesthetic artistic reasons. <laughs> okay, um, as Pim said, we're looking for a new batch team, so you can come talk to me. Don't think of it too lightly, as you hopefully now understand after seeing this amazing presentation. There's a lot of work going into it, so if you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do it, then it's maybe not the best idea. If you're really serious then talk to me. I'm really interested to hear your plans and your crazy ideas. But before that, first of all, really, thank you so much, Pim, Saka, Nicolette, Tom, Joris, Charilas, and all the other people that helped to make this amazing batch. Um, I don't know if everybody knew that so much work were, was in it and that there's so much uh, story 
in it and behind it because of these creative and technical masterminds. I cannot express any other way. I'm so thankful. So thank you so much and please give it up for the batch team of 2023. Thank you. Okay, now uh, 